you were a cruise here in your life application is awesome. I think it was the cosmic skeptic. <clears throat> um, I was looking over my history at some videos and going over them that I, I watched a lot of videos today. I was going over these videos and this is my last day off. Got to go back to work tomorrow in the morning. I'll probably be doing another video. And uh, that'll be the last one I'll do for probably a while. Um, so God's got me busy with some other things. Um, praise God. But I think it was the Cosmic Skeptic is his name that asked the question. Uh, and I just saw it there. I, di I didn't. I didn't go inve investigate it. I didn't click on it. I saw. I said, "What? What's he saying now?" Okay. Um, he asked the question. Why would God allow a child to suffer cancer? I believe it was something on along those lines. Or, no, that's the way. What do you mean answered it? I think he said, would God allow, no, 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 he did say, he did say it that way. Why would God allow a child to suffer cancer? And before I went back and looked at it, I was thinking, he said, would God, where's my phone? How do you say that? Uh, somewhere I saw, maybe it was somebody else, you know, in the lineup with his video that said, would God allow a child to suffer cancer? I'm going to ask, answer that question. Okay, that's the question I'm going to answer. Yeah. Okay, um, Oh, yeah, he did say it that way. Would God allow kids to get cancer? Now, the uh, What Do You Mean channel, he answered it differently. Well, he s said the question differently. Would God allow kids to get cancer? Well, kids do have cancer. Lots of them. Matter of fact, I think um, certain cancers, kids get it more than adults do. And um, I think that um, um, it's a tragedy, it's a shame. Me, myself, I don't go, like when I was a kid, um, I paid a lot of attention to um, kids that suffered, you know, um, you know, the March of Dimes kids, you know, the Children's Hospital kids, you know, the ones that are in there for life. They're in these hospitals like they're in jail or something, you know, because they, they're too sick to be home, you know. Um, they're in wheelchairs. That you can't take out of the building. They're in these special wheelchairs. They're on these special machines. You got kids that are constantly growing like weeds, but they're still on an incubator. They're still, 
you know, in a tube, in a box, a bubble, or whatever, you know, looking like a vegetable. It's and they're living, you know. Mom and dad have to come see them and feed them, and it's sad. It's not only sad for the kid, but it's sad for the family, you know. And you look at that kid and you see what that kid has to suffer, and it makes you sometimes think, like, should I have an abortion? Maybe if I had an abortion, this child wouldn't have had to suffer. Hmm. But, the question is, can a human allow a kid to suffer cancer? That's my, that's, that's my answer. Can a kid allow a kid to suffer cancer? Would a human allow a kid to suffer cancer if he had the power to stop it? And if he had the power to stop cancer? Let's talk about you selfish bums for a minute. Let's say only one human. Let's say there's a real life Superman. And he's able to keep a kid from suffering from cancer. But see, he belongs to some kind of party. He's either a Republican or a Democrat, right? He's either, uh, you know, he's either gay or transgender, okay? Or he's, uh, you know, a capitalist, uh, you know, a feminist. Um, he supports abortion. You know, he's a normal person, see? He's a normal person. So, let me ask you this question. Let's say God was, let's say God and Clark Kent was the same person. Let's say Superman and God are the same person. Would Superman, if Superman supported abortion and women's rights, would he allow a child to suffer cancer? Oh, he would probably kill the child so that he wouldn't have to suffer cancer. Right? I have to move this light. Hold on a second. So, you got to understand that what kind of person... God is. God is not a human. So why don't gorillas being there our common ancestors? Why are they not concerned about, you know, we say that animals are smarter than humans and animals feel and care better than humans, right? So why don't the gorillas, our common ancestors, the apes, our common ancestors, right? Why don't they, why aren't they not concerned about kids suffering from cancer? We, 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 why isn't the law of gravity concerned about kids suffering from cancer? Why, why are all these people out here saving the puppies? not doing anything to save the kids. But oh, let a dog suffer from cancer. Oh, let a dog suffer from cancer. You know. Well, then again, some people, you still have the right to put a dog down if a dog is sick. Or if a dog bites another person, in some states, you know, um, if he's got rabies or anything, you have a right to put the dog down, right? But a lot of people will pay thousands of dollars to save that dog from a horrible illness like cancer. Okay? 
Now, the medication that they have for dogs works better for dogs than it does than the medication we have for children and adults, okay? Um, dogs get lucky. Um, but anyway, um, why isn't the sun, the moon, the stars? Why are they not caring about suffering children and people struggling with diseases and crime and all these things that are going on going on in the earth we're able to turn men into women and women into men and we claim that they're real when we change them this way and pretty soon if not already we'll be able to make men get pregnant and have babies from their own bodies okay but wait a minute we can do all that but we can't save a kid from cancer what's wrong with us and then wait a minute the cosmic skeptic asked the question would God allow a kid to suffer cancer I thought God didn't exist oh I get it you're just saying this to show that there is no God because if God didn't exist if God existed I should say then kids wouldn't suffer cancer well I'm glad God gives you the credit for that but let me t let me remind you there's so much of the Bible it's huge you know the way atheists read the Bible is rigged like Donald Trump like this conspiracy against Donald Trump it's a conspiracy it's 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 like rigged like 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 there's so much that just goes right over your head just so much it just goes right over your head just right over your head you're not getting it God is not a man he's a he but he's not a man and he's not a woman he's a person but he's not a human okay God is a type of creature, a type of entity that has his own mind and his own way of doing things. And the best of his creation is for him to create humans that are bound to suffer. Adam and Eve would have never, however, died of cancer. No way, Jose. Because when sin was shed in the Garden of Eden, over your head again, okay, sin and death spread through the human race. I know you're tired of hearing it, but this is the way it goes. Adam and Eve would have never suffered cancer. My God, she didn't even have to suffer pain in childbearing she didn't need a doctor she didn't need nobody to be with her when she had her children she just said Adam hold on a second I'll be with you in a minute I'm having a baby and she just like taking a poop like you don't need nobody to sit there and help you poop she just you ready to come out sweetheart okay pow come on out of there okay but you, because she sinned, and Adam with her, you don't get don't get it like that. When you have a baby, somebody's got to be there. There's an umbilical umbilical cord that has to be cut. They don't show that in movies. And 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 then you know, you, you gotta you gotta wrap the child. You gotta you know. 
there, there's blood, there's, there's, you, you know, you got, there's stitches that gotta be, uh, the woman has, is bleeding, there's blood everywhere, there's stitches that gotta be done, and, you know, there's a lot of cleaning up, and the, the cleanup is a lot of work, you know, it's, it's a mess. Okay? And it hurts. It hurts. It's worse than any migraine you've ever had. In your stomach, in your head, anywhere. It's the worst migraine you ever want to feel. Would a God allow a child to suffer cancer? It depends on what he's doing at the time. And it depends on if his parents or the child believe in God. First of all. Because miracles don't happen without prayer. Miracles don't happen without prayer. People might get lucky without prayer, but miracles don't happen without prayer. Okay? Miracles do not happen without prayer. So, if an atheist has a child that is suffering from cancer, I suggest for the remaining time that that child is suffering, he needs to stop being an atheist so he can call on the name of the Lord in the hope that by him believing enough to have a little bit of respect for God, God might do him the favor of eventually healing his child. But you got to ask God. See, when you look at Christians talking about their kids suffering from cancer, the parents are able to, the parents want one thing or the other. They want either the child to, to stop having this issue. They want this disease to go away and they want their child to, re to be restored to normal. Or... They want to be able to say goodbye to the child, pardon their child, into everlasting peace with Jesus in the heavenlies. And there is no more suffering because the child is with the Lord. And I know I've watched plenty of parents who lost a son or a daughter whether it was a sickness or illness or whether the child got shot or killed in a car accident by a drunk driver or whatever it may be. Their peace was that their child was with the Lord because either their child was small enough or their child was believing in God enough that God, or I should say Jesus enough, that God would spare that child into the heavenlies to be with the Lord and see his face as he is and be in the arms of Jesus throughout eternity. And, that, and they believe that that's the way it was. See, we got all this stuff going on and we don't question the spirit behind it. Like, would God allow a man to, and I'm getting ready to do a video on this too, but would God allow a man to be born in a woman's body? Would God allow a woman to be born in a man's body? 
Would God allow a man to be gay? Would God allow anyone to have transgender dysphoria? Would God allow, you know, a person to smoke cigarettes knowing that they cause that they that they cause cancer? Would God allow anyone to smoke cigarettes? knowing that it causes cancer. Would God allow a man to beat his wife? Would God allow a woman to cheat on her husband and ruin their marriage? Would God allow any woman to be a prostitute and 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 ruin her life like that? Would you know, would God would God stop porn? Would God stop the KKK, Black Lives Matter? My God, there's so many things that are messed up in this world and you're just now asking, would God allow a child to suffer cancer? Would God allow an atheist to ask that unconsiderable question? That was actually a stupid question. But he did, didn't he? So yes, Mr. Cosmic. Just like he allows you to ask a stupid question. Yes, he would allow a child. There's your answer. You had your answer when you asked a stupid question. Yes, God would allow a child to suffer from cancer. Just so you could ask that question. Because... The strongest creature in the world is the lion. He would eat your kid faster than he would help your kid be relieved of cancer. He would tear your kid to pieces. Would God allow a man that transitioned into a woman have prostate cancer when he's no longer a man, he's a woman? Can a woman get prostate cancer? Being she's now a man? She transitioned to a man? Does that mean she gets she got male hormones in her body? Does that mean she gets prostate cancer now? It is a shame, and I I don't blame any man or woman being angry at God for human suffering. However, it still is a stupid question. Because we all know that you don't want God to think like you. You don't want God to act like you. You don't want God to be you. Okay? You don't want God to be you. You don't want God to be a human. You want God to be just who he is. God already hit the world with cancer the day that Adam and Eve sinned. Over your head. I know you don't care, but that's the way it is. That's the way it is. God struck the world with cancer the minute he told Eve, you will have pain during childbirth. 
The reason why your kid is suffering from cancer is because your privileges are over. They were over long before you ever thought about being born. They were over in the Garden of Eden. You want to get mad at somebody, get mad at Adam and Eve. Don't get mad at your common ancestors because they didn't die and go to heaven. But Adam and Eve is still living. Your common ancestor is dead and ain't coming back. He didn't go. He didn't go into the heavenlies because he's because he doesn't have a soul. But Adam and Eve, if you know the Lord, you will meet Adam and Eve one day on the other side. And you can ask them, why did you have to screw all this up for us? We could have had it good and you screwed it up for us. If Adam and Eve had done the right thing, none of this would have ever happened. They would have been the eternal leaders of the heavenly race. And they would have had more children and they would have more children and more children and those children would have had children and more children and more children and their more children would have had children and children and children until the earth was populated and populated and kept populated and you know there would have been a completion and it would, would have been just eternal bliss never any of this Never any of this. There, we wouldn't have time for anything negative to be talked about on YouTube. We wouldn't have time. There wouldn't be no atheists. There wouldn't even be Christians. Just be people of God, the family of God. Just people. But no, Adam and Eve screwed it up. So now we have two kinds of people. And we have blessings and cursings. We have two kinds of people. And we have blessings and cursings. We have people who know the Lord and people who don't know the Lord. And we have people who are blessed. And then we have people who suffer the curses that come on the human race. And this child that is suffering from cancer is one of those people. Not that he is any worse off than I am. But because there's two kinds of people. It's hereditary. Because of Adam and Eve's sin. So what you need to be worried about is sin. I watched a video today. I'm getting ready to do this video. I don't know if I'm gonna do it today or tomorrow, but I gotta do this video. Yes, it is, it is, it is, it's a video that I gotta do. I gotta do this video. Um, and I don't know if I'm gonna do it right after this one or if I'm gonna wait till tomorrow, but I gotta do this video. Um, but in closing, there's two kinds of people. Okay. The blessed and the cursed. If you're not a born-again Christian, you're likely to be cursed. And even Christians have curses in their lives. Just like, I'm diabetic because my mother was diabetic. Okay. It's hereditary. Okay. Okay. Also, my family, those are the two things in my family, diabetes, well, all three, diabetes, high blood, high blood pressure, and cancer, runs rapidly in my family. Matter of fact, all my cousins on one side of family have and have had and have died of high blood pressure, okay? My mother was diabetic, and I'm diabetic. I have asthma, my Uncle Freddie had emphysema. My cousins have uh, lung collapse problems, whatever they call that. Okay, we, uh, we, we, lung, 
lung cancer. My grandmother died of lung cancer, okay? Lung cancer and all the ailments with the lungs runs in my family, high blood pressure, diabetes, and cancer. We got it all, okay? Um, where is God in all this? Not once have I ever blamed God. Not once have I ever blamed God. My family suffers all these diseases. Not once have I blamed God. And even, even though half of them are not Christian, they didn't blame God either. Because they know that if God exists, we're going to suffer. Because there's two kinds of people. If God exists, we're going to suffer. And if God exists, we're going to be blessed. Blessings and cursings. We have them both. And we don't know who in this room is going to be the next person to get cancer. Or the next person to get diabetes. Okay? We don't know. High blood pressure. We don't know. You smoking, okay? That that's 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 red flag for for lung cancer, man. You smoking. You drinking. Red flag. Okay? Man, look at all that sugar and fat you eating. You eat that more than you eat regular food. That's a red flag. God is blessing and cursing. There's two things you can do in, in your life to fight cancer. Number one, fight sin. And number two, watch your diet and watch your habits. Don't drink excessively. Don't smoke anything because ain't nothing. Ain't there ain't no holy smoke. There ain't no righteous smoke. All smoking is bad. I don't care if you're smoking cigars or vaping. It's bad. Okay? It's not meant to go in your body. If you light something, it becomes narcotic. Your body's not meant to breathe in that. Okay? Two ways you can help yourself is pray and fight against sin. And watch your diet. And watch your life's habits. Don't do drugs. Drugs have a bad return policy. You could do drugs today. And it could affect the rest of your life. My ex-wife went back into drugs after we divorced. For a very small period of time. And those drugs destroyed her. She's now suffering from depression. Okay? She's, she's suffering from depression and other illnesses. And the doctor won't tell her this because he doesn't want to discriminate or make her think he's making a statement. But the fact of the matter is... This is what these drugs did to her. I know this, okay? And she knows it, okay? She'll never be the same again. She's going to her grave like this. She'll never be the same again. You want to help yourself, stop sinning. Stop fornicating, okay? Stop drinking and smoking. Stop doing drugs. Um... Pray. Start reaching out to God. The Bible says, draw near to God. God will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Okay? And when it says cleanse your hands, it really means cleanse your body. 
stop doing the things that you do with your hands is what that means okay stop touching women you ain't married to okay Stop touching men you ain't married to. Stop letting men touch you that ain't married to you. Okay? Stop the gay nonsense. Okay? And I'm, I'm heading into the video that I'm, that I'm getting ready to do, but when you become transgender, stop. Because transgenderism does more danger to the body than anything I've ever heard of that what they do to your body it's like a it's like being aborted and coming out as the aborted child that's what that's what transgenderism is like it's like you know when you get transition surgery it's like and transition the hormones and all in the medications and the treatments and all that stuff it's like being a it's like being an aborted child and you came back to life and says oh I'm an aborted child so I identify as an aborted child that's what it's like because it takes so much out of your body and you're right transgender when you become transgender you're no longer you know, you we can't tell whether you gay or straight or what you are. You're right about that because it takes a lot of that away from you. You lose a lot of your sexual desire. And now we got this, you know, you know, you know, I'm really disappointed. Why would God allow a man-made vagina to enjoy sex the way a real God-made vagina would enjoy sex. To me, that's a shame. Shame on you, God. Shame on you, God. Shame on you, Lord. Shame on you. We'll never be able to to win this if we keep letting if we keep letting science and medicine think that they can have control over sexuality and biology like this. We'll never win this battle as long as they keep winning like this. Hearing these trans women talk about you know then again hold up hold up hold up hold up see I'm, I'm going into the video that I'm getting ready to do hold up hold up hold up the first trans women I heard come out and talk about her her vag vaginal surgery he said that he he didn't enjoy it he he still uh, preferred, you know, anal sex over vaginal sex. He said he didn't really do much with his his post-op vagina. So maybe you know, in my opinion, I still think that you know the difference between a post-op woman and a biological woman is when a woman is in love and with her man that that runs through her whole body her whole genetic makeup is a woman when she's in bed with her man and his and her man is doing what he's supposed to be doing Okay, he's doing her benevolence, okay? But when you are a man enjoying what which supposedly women are enjoying, you even got the vagina to prove that ugly thing, to prove 
that you're enjoying it. You're soaking up the bed to prove that you're enjoying it. I think it's like a woman playing with sex toys instead of being with a real man. Okay? Because it ends its sex. But for a biological woman or woman, sex is more than just, you know, what you did last night with a dude. Sex is... It, it is part of you. It is, it, it, it is, you are a sexual being. It is God in you. It is your creation. It is, it is you biologically. It is, it is, it is the nature of God in you. Okay? The image of God in you. Enough. I am D. Roy Cruz. I am your life applications officer. Thank you for watching. You know, I could go on, I could go on and go on and go on and go on, but I think I've answered your question very, very well. When you become the creatures that you're supposed to be in the eyes of God, and that includes myself, then you can complain about human suffering. Because the only reason why you are here is to suffer. Because of Adam and Eve's sin. Because they did the same thing you do. They decided to rebel against God. The only difference between you and them is they thought they was doing it behind God's back. But we all know. We can't do nothing behind God's back. Even the atheists know God sees everything. That's why you ask some stupid questions. I'm out. D. Roy Cruz, your life applications officer, signing off. Thank you for watching. God bless you. I'll see you in the next one.